Welcome to Discovery Indie Film. I'm your host, Jeff Howard, and today's podcast is an interview with Kevin Nielsen. Kevin's film, See Yourself Out, took the Grand Jury Prize at the Sherman Oaks Film Festival in 2017. And if you go to discoveryindiefilm.com right now, you can watch it. I do have to say this for every podcast, but this is a film you just have to see. It's so well made. Everything about it is great. And as always, the interview is going to be way better if you watch the film first. So like I said, go to discoverindiefilm.com and check out See Yourself Out and then listen to this interview with Kevin Nielsen. All right, let's go. Uh, I was just obsessed with it as a kid. I think, um, you know, I remember my parents, you know, had this big bookshelf in our living room and it was just full of VHS tapes, stuff like that. And we, I mean, we lived out in the middle of nowhere. Um, and that so was Idaho? That was Idaho. Yeah. in rural Idaho called a little town called Sand Hollow, Idaho. Um, it's a little dot. And, um, but during the summer vacations, I mean, I was, I was there, I was the youngest of fifth kid, uh, of five kids. And so it was just, it was usually just me, um, hanging out, um, during the day. So I would just watch movies. I would find just, you know, a lot of Clint Eastwood. Um, I, I remember I used to watch, uh, this movie called shoot to kill with, uh, with, uh, Poitier and, uh, Tom Berenger. It's not a bad little movie. It's, you know, it's right. an 80s. But it was, it was their library that you were just. Yeah. So I just, would just start kind of consuming all the stuff. And then I think about, gosh, I want to say 11 or 12 years old, I watched Raising Arizona. Oh. And that was the first time I think I realized like, oh, there's something else going on. Like that, ca- that move that where the camera is like flying it's, I think it's during a Nick Cage uh, dream sequence where the camera's like flying over a car and then up the ladder into the room. And like, what the hell is going on there? And then it just started kind of, I just started like finding more information. And then I, then I, then I saw Ed Wood and like, oh, there's a person who does that. Yeah. So the auteur it, thing, you, you started recognizing these filmmakers who are really personalizing their work. Yes. Yes. And then it just kind of, I started kind of, um, I begged for a subscription to entertainment weekly. <laughs> <laughs> well, by the way, can I ask, did, did raising Arizona, was that, did that filter down from parents or from older siblings? That was, I, that was like, we taped it off cable. So I didn't see it without commercials for like a decade. Right. So, it, but it was just one of those and it was, and it was edited as well. So, but it was like just this weird thing that I don't know who taped it, but it was just a, it was just a VHS tape that was by the VCR. So it was just kind of a very cool thing. Um, and, um, just kind of seeing those, seeing how that all worked. And then I just started finding lists. Okay. What movies am I supposed to watch? Right. Okay. Did that, so, did that come from your Entertainment Weekly subscription? Uh, a little bit of that. And we were, you know, I think we, we got the internet <laughs> kind of late 90s sort of thing. Um, so I kind of started going on finding lists as much as I could. And um, books, there was, God, what was the book? Uh, Richard Pearson, I think, wrote it. It was, um, it was about the indie film scene in um, you know, about, you know, that 94, that from like 90 to 94 film scene about Spike Lee and Tarantino and Linkletter and yeah, but there was a maybe book. even Jarmusch and, and Jarmusch and like Kevin Smith said, so Oh, uh, Spike, Mike slackers and dykes, I think was the name of the book. So I started kind of reading that. And so, it's, okay, well, I'm going to start finding Kevin Smith movies. I'm going to start finding Richard Linkletter movies, Spike Lee and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then uh, Pulp Fiction happened and that just, Okay, I want to be a rock star filmmaker. That's one hundred percent what I want to be. I'm, I'm. That's the path I want to be on. So, and what is so? What does he do? Okay, he writes, directs, produces. Okay, I got to learn how to do that. And it, and it just kind of went from there. And this was still like preteen. Yeah, this was. Um, I was probably about thirteen or fourteen. Right. 
so yeah, it just kind of went from there. And, um, you know, it's hard getting into a film scene here in Boise. Um, you really got to seek it out, but there are, there are people here and that's what I did about, uh, um, 20 years old. Right. So, so you were, so in your teens, you weren't able to get your hands on a camcorder? No, no, not really. It was, I mean, it was, it was tough. I was mostly doing the writing. So I would just kind of write either short stories or try to write scripts, um, usually on legal pads. Um, so I, I had a whole box of just old, you know, script starts, scenes, things like that, that were just kind of in my closet for a long time that I went through the other recently. Right. So a lot yeah. of writing, a lot of writing. Around. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I felt like, well, that's what I can do right now. So that's what I worked on. I think probably the most. Right. So 20 year in college and, and you, yeah, so, so that was the thing. I think, um, you know, Idaho did not have a film school. Um, film schools were, you know, they were in LA and New York and Chicago. And, um, I looked around and it's like, man, I can't really afford it. I can't get there. So I'm going to, I'm going to learn on my own, I think is what I kind of thought. Right. And I, um, so because that's like what NYU I, was like, NYU was sort of like the Holy grail back then. Right. Because it's right, where yeah, Spike yeah, Lee oh, yeah. and Jarm and everyone was coming out. 100%. Yeah. Um, so I kind of started looking into those. I even I did go to Seattle briefly to look at a at a little film school that was up there, but it was I mean it was it was in a house and it was like a certificate and it was, you know, 40 grand and it was it there are times when I think, man, that would have been a cool adventure, but at the same time I I don't know what I would have learned there that I couldn't have learned here. Um, so I just didn't do that. Um, but it's funny now that I'm, I'm 37, um, I am currently in college and, uh, getting a film degree that at uh, Boise state university, which is, they just added a film program, uh, a couple semesters ago. So right. that's what I've been working towards. Oh, cool. A little late, but I'm getting, but there. so, so there's a 17 year gap. So what happened, what happened in between that when you were 20 and now? So basically I was just working here in town. Um, there's quite a few filmmakers that were either making, you know, feature films or shorts or doing some corporate work and things like that. So I would just kind of try to get on anything I could. Um, uh, the f I, I found a small class when I was 20 years old, I found a small class that was just being taught by a couple local filmmakers and they were teaching a digital filmmaking on a, you know, Canon did, DV camera and they were going to teach you how to shoot and edit and do all that. So I showed up there, um, took the class and they said, well, we're getting ready to start our feature. Um, and, uh, you know, I, I'm the Travis who was, uh, the main, uh, one of the main instructors said, I, I wrote it and directed it. And Greg, who was the other, um, uh, he was directing it. And so I said, okay, Great. And they said, do you want to be a part of it? Like I said, yeah, anything. So I held the boom on that production. Um, and that was, yeah, that was almost 17, 13, 14 years ago. Um, and on my last film, uh, Travis starred in my last short and Greg shot it. So it's been a, it's been a very longstanding friendship and a great collaboration with those guys. But that's basically what I've been doing for that, for that time period is just trying to get any shot I could at, at learning something new. Right. So you were piling up scripts that you were writing mm -hmm. at home. And then when was the first chance you got to shoot something that you wrote? So that was probably in Oh, Oh six or Oh seven. Um, when I, I wrote a script and, you know, I, looking back at, I sh probably needed about two more drafts. But I was all jazzed up as you, as you are when you're when you're in your twenties and ready to go. And and there were some people who were you know, willing to help and shoot it. We shot it for zero dollars. I mean, like I think I rented the space we shot in for like two hundred and fifty bucks, and that was that was it. Everything else was borrowed, and everybody else just kind of volunteered their time. Um, I shot it. 
I, I think the performances are good. I think my direction is pretty bad. And it, um, so it just kind of sat there. And that, that stung me a little bit. It's, it's on a hard drive. It's got some footage. There's some footage of it on my reel. Um, but it, it just never materialized into something that I felt could, could be a, a real movie. Right. So it really was just uh, rehearsal practice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, felt like, well, it was, you know, I learned some things. Hopefully the next time will be better. And then, um, God, I think it was, uh, yeah, it was, it was 2016 uh, when uh, Sun Valley Film Festival had come out with a, uh, a screenplay competition for a short screenplay. And so I submitted uh, the script for See Yourself Out to it, and it won, and they gave it money, and they said, okay, you have a year to make it. So it was just – it was very much – I was thrown in and forced, and Did you I had submit to do it. Several, several scripts, or was See Yourself just, Out? Just, just the one, yeah. Was that because it's clearly your best, or you felt it just – It was just it, – it was the one that I felt was, yeah, probably the closest to – really being complete. Um, it was, it was funny because I, I was kind of forced to, to edit it quite a bit. Um, I was getting ready to turn it in at about 22 pages. Um, and of course me, I didn't really read the rules too carefully. I thought, well, I'll just submit my script. Um, so I start reading the rules the night I'm ready to submit it the night of the deadline to submit it. And they said the script can't be longer than 15 <laughs> pages. So, um, I spent the next four hours, my wife and I, she just rat, uh, read the script to me out loud several times and like, oh, okay, we can cut that. We can cut that. We can cut that. And it got down. We, we, we got rid of seven pages. Yeah, the, the, the table read system. <laughs> yeah. And so like, no, that actually made it a lot tighter and a lot, you know, clearer. And it was, it was actually a very good editing process. Um, and yeah, it just went in and some, for some reason people liked it. Well, because it's excellent. That's oh. what, I mean, I mean <laughs> it's hands down, you know, a beautifully written short. I'm oh, sure they don't get you. nearly that many, you know, that many shorts. So good. Oh, well, thank you and very much. Were you always just writing shorts and features, just whatever popped into your head you wrote? Um, so I have, a. Yeah, pretty much. I, I mostly it was scenes, you know, like, oh, that's an interesting scene or, um, it, I, it's funny in see yourself out. There's that kind of very, o that opening right before the title card comes up. That scene was going to be in something completely different. Really? Yeah, it was, um, you know, cause I, you know, I had written about that subject matter, uh, quite a bit. And so there was just, it was, it was set for something else. Um, and as I was kind of, and it wasn't in the, the, the version that I submitted to the competition either, just kind of, as we were building up, I thought, what, what needs to be there? What is kind of a, a nice opening? And then it just kind of, I right. plucked and that's the from parking lot. Like, oh. Um, no, that is the, uh, when he's sitting on the couch Oh, with the, uh, yeah. And gets the phone call. Right. Right. Sorry. I was remembering yeah. the parking lot as being, no, closed. no. Yeah. No, yeah. It was just, uh, yeah, it was in something else. That, I mean, that, that is the very next thing. Um, so it's interesting, was, uh, though. So you have scenes and fragments. It's funny because I know, I know there's a lot of hugely successful uh, songwriters who often, you know, just say fragments all the time. Yeah. I, you know, it's that, it's that funny thing. I, I you know, I, I'm a big fan of, you know, people like the Coens and Aaron Sorkin and, uh, gosh, so, so many other writers that, so I try, okay, what's, what's their process? What do they do? And they're all so different. Yeah. There's no, <laughs> there's no one way. Right. So, so I've just always tried to go like, well, what's interesting or, you know, if I have a big idea, I just try to outline it, um, whether that's a feature or a short, um, and then don't get stuck with, well, I don't have an opening. Well, but you have this scene. So write that scene and maybe it'll work 
Right. You know, so you actually have mix. this uh, you have this treasure trove to pilfer through when you, <laughs> hopefully, when you need sometimes. to. Sometimes, yeah, yeah. No, that's very cool. So you you submit this script to Sun Valley and Sun Valley Film Festival, and they give you a budget and a year. Yes, and a, and a set uh, premiere date. Right. So there, you're going to premiere in next year's festival. Mm, yes. And uh, just get it done. A year is very generous. I mean, I don't think pretty generous. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It took you know, it, it took a weekend to shoot, so it was you know pretty nice to to have that and and be able to to build up to it because I did do another draft of the script and got you know there's a lot of acting in it, so it was it was nice to have that lead time of of doing a lot of rehearsal and and really getting it right before we sat down and actually put it on 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 tape. Yeah, I was going to ask, did that, uh, did winning that, did that create, how did that feel knowing that you now had to shoot this? Was it, was it, <laughs> ad, was it, uh, elation? Was it, was it anxiety? Was it a, a mess? <clears throat> it was, it was a lot of anxiety because I just, I, I think one of the, especially here where we're working very, very, independently and you know a lot of people who actually do get stuff done or made around here it's it's not you're not getting a budget from a studio or your or you know a lot of investors there's not a lot of you're on your own timeline it's like well i ha i have the script and i'm very passionate about it but you know i i you know i can make it in a year you know you know get it get it edited in two sort of thing and you know and then just see what happens whereas this was Okay, no, you have you have one year. You need to get it done. You need to get it to a point where it can show in front of an audience, and you're going to be at that audience. And so it was. It was for me. It was very nerve wracking and a little. But at the same time, I was all in and just very very excited that I got that opportunity. So it was. It was. It was a mix, definitely. Yeah. So so your first step was okay. I'm diving back into the script and improving it all I can. Yeah. Cause I knew, you know, even, you know, as good as that editing, that night of editing was like, okay, that probably need that transition probably needs to be short up a little bit or, or, you know, maybe, maybe that idea in the script, you know, this particular scene idea just kind of got lost a little bit. So I want to shore up the dialogue a little bit. So that was mostly just clean up from the, from the big editing chop that we did. Right. And then what happened next? Did you cast or did you? So it's funny. Um, I, you know, I, I'm very, very close with the, with the community here. Um, so I had people in mind. Those, the two actors that are in it are the people I had in mind. Yeah. Actually, it was a so, leading question because I was hoping you'd tell me. And then I got the two actors and we rehearsed it for six months. <laughs> <laughs> just about. I mean, we, um, I, I reached out to, to both and, and just sent them the script. I said, these parts are yours if you want them. Um, and uh, let's let's get together and do a table read and see what you think. And um, and then it was just uh, every couple every week or, or a couple weeks we would get together and and run through it several more times until I mean just everybody was just and dialing. Were you, were you just uh, did you have a pen and you were just scratching up the script as you heard them go through it and. Uh, well, the script was perfect, Jeff. Come on. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> it is. I just want, you know, obviously. Uh. No, uh, no, of course. And I mean, there was a few, there were a few things, um, especially um, with, uh, so there is a, if, not to give anything away, but there is a, there is a, a gun that yes. shows up in, in the, in the, in the middle of the movie. And, it, 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 um, Aaron, who is the lead actor who's supposed to be carrying the gun, you know, gives a, uh, gave me a very good question. Like, where the hell was this the whole time? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that is a, that is a great question. <laughs> and and just had to kind of figure that, the, all those logistics out. And, um, so, so that was a big part of it and just kind of getting blocking. And that was, that was something was, was blocking was surprisingly, difficult for me to wrap my head around. It was because I figured, okay, well, and you know, they'll be sitting and then we'll talk. And it, I was, I was very, very concerned about the words and the, the emotions behind the words. Whereas like, 
yeah, but Nick's got to get up and walk over here when he says that. So it was, it was a big trial by fire sort of lesson in directing. Yeah. And, Although and, the beautiful thing is you had so much time to make exactly, it right. Exactly. Yes. If, so if it, you had had to shoot in three weeks, <laughs> uh, you know, and this, this is, I'm, I'm learning why it's such a beautifully effective film because you, you had oh, this wonderful opportunity to, to make it that way. Really? Yes. Yes. And it was, yeah, it was just such a nice, it was, um, and Sun Valley was unbelievably supportive. It was, it, it was, they weren't a lot, there wasn't a lot of checking in. How's it going? Can we see a rough draft? It was, you know, festivals mid-March. Can you have it to us by March 1? Like, yeah. <laughs> well, and, and so here's, here's the key, uh, key question. So what, at what point in the rehearsal and, and working out and the really just pre-production process, did you turn to your actors and anyone else and say, okay, I think we're going to start shooting. <laughs> so the thing with, with here is everybody's got a day job. There's no, there's no one who's just, you know, has nothing but free time. So I said, look, we're shooting September 5th. And this is, I mean, the work, I mean, this is May when I'm telling them this, we're shooting September 5th. So, right, so you had a calendar, so you yeah. knew that this rehearsal pre the prep process was going to be four months. Yeah. So let's Smart. let's let's get it. Let's get as many rehearsals as we can in. Let's do tech rehearsals. Let's do all that and get everything right because you know finding the location was was difficult. That we just kind of stumbled into that location as well. Um, that was uh, my cinematographer used to live there with a, with a roommate. And he said, I think I know the people who live there now. They'd probably let us come in. And that really? was, that was that oh, basically, so that it. wasn't, that wasn't, uh, some, so that was, wasn't somebody's home. That was someone's former home. Yeah. Yeah. So they just, um, and the people who live there, they cleared out for like two days. It was very, very nice of them. That's, that's what people often say at the festivals and Q and A's are like, yeah, I was not in the Los Angeles area. So everyone was nice. What was your restaurant easy to get? So that was, yeah, that was, um, that was a little kind of like a, it's a little tap room beer bar that's, uh, um, in a little town called downtown Meridian. Um, and it's a little basement area and I, I just, I would go there. I would go there for, you know, just grab a beer once in a while. And it was just a really, really cool little place. So finally I, just, why don't I just shoot here? And I asked the, the owner, I'm like, would you mind, like, you guys are close Sunday. Like, could I come in and, like, just take over for, like, four hours this Sunday? And they said, yeah. Yeah. Uh, 50 bucks? <laughs> <laughs> the cost All of, right. uh, you, it would be the same as, like, treating two people there? It, pretty much, yeah. So, and, and I mean, the, he showed up, unlocked the door, let us in, told me to leave the key uh, in the in the mailbox. Fantastic. And it, just, and and it, it looked so, so you provided your own extras and things too, right? Yes. Yeah. It was all this. So yeah, a lot of, a lot of my friends got a little, you know, you see their elbow or you see, you know, or something like that. Yeah, I know because it really feels full of life. And you know, it's, it, yeah, it's, it's such a very small crew, but, it, but it, they, they did such a great job of creating a, a big sort of environment, you know, and like, um, the receptionist on the phone at the very beginning, that's, I mean, that's our makeup lady, Sherry, Sherry Jaffet. So she's, and, and she does, vo she's a comedian and does voiceover stuff. So she was like, she gave a lot of life into that just little voice performance. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I guess one thing I didn't ask was like crewing up, you just, you were part of this community of artists and filmmakers. So when you crewed up, it was, it was just like your actors. You had obvious choices who to aim for. Did you have, you know? So, well, uh, the the crew itself, there was a lot of people. I mean, um, there was one uh, kind of our, our 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 main grip 
who, you know, he, he owns a grip truck. He's a wonderful person as well. Chaz Gentry. And I've known him for 10 years, 15 years. So that was, that was a first choice. So I kind of deferred to him on a lot of, you know, the key grips and, and, and any other kind of crew he would need any help he would need. Um, and he brought on some, some wonderful people, Lila Stryker, who's worked on my latest film as well. And then, um, Nick, my, my lead actor, I, I did not know who I was going to have shoot it. Um, so he just suggested, uh, a guy that he had worked with recently. He said, he's a cool guy, nice guy, talented guy. So I looked at just a couple things he had shot and just reached out. And that was another thing of just, who do you need? Who do you like working with? And we'll bring them on board. And that, that, it just kind of snowballed from there. Just, I would hire one person and then they would basically hire two people to come Right, help. right. Uh, uh, basically like a feeling of community even. At yeah. Time. And that was, and that was the nice thing. Nobody was being forced to work with someone they didn't want to, or, you know, or, or didn't respect. So it was very, it was just a really, really great vibe on set. And, and that was a key thing, especially with the subject matter kind of wanted to keep it as light as possible. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. So, so you shoot and, and did you shoot over a few weekends since you were squeezing it in between people's jobs or we, 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 we jammed it, jammed through it in a weekend. One weekend you jammed that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It was, there were a couple very, very long days, but we see because I, and I asked it that way because honestly, if you told me that you spent, you know, uh, two months working, you know, six weekends in a row, squeezing stuff in, I would have believed you because it's, it's just, there's a polish to it that uh, oh, it's impressive. It's a really impressive that you got that all in, in one, one bum rush. Yeah. Well, and I, and I, I really do attribute a lot of that to just, you know, the, the preparation process and, and all that rehearsal time, because, you know, there's a lot of long takes in that movie. And for Nick and Aaron just came in, dialed in and prepared. And it was pretty easy just to set up the shot. There wasn't a lot of, can you try it this way? Can you try it? That? We've, we'd been through all that. So it was, it was just set up and go. And, um, Zach Voss, my, my director of photography, a guy who works, you know, he, he runs a video production company. He, he does corporate stuff. He has to get stuff done in a, in the four hours before, you know, a business opens. He's very, very dialed in as well. He comes in prepared and knowing what angles he's ready to go with and, and what lighting he needs to be prepared to, to add. And, you know, everybody was just so prepared and, and yeah, particularly for the, you, because you'd had such a. I assume while you were rehearsing and going through it, you were also, like you said, you were blocking. Obviously, yeah. as you were blocking, you were creating shot lists in your, yeah. head, in your head and on paper. So, right. yeah, and this it's... was uh, the reason it looks so polished for a weekend shoot is that is that it was just so well prepared. Oh, thank you. And, and that was the nice thing, especially that, that location, the main location was not kind of the layout I was looking for. You know, when you write something, it's, you have it in your head very, very clearly. Yeah. yeah and, the, and, the final apartment. Yes. And it's, yeah. And who knows if you're going to be able to find that apartment that's in your head. And so when we got into that place, I'm like, this has such a strange layout. It's, 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 it's kind of in a circle. And, but as you kind of start walking through it, we walked through it, I think two or three times before we actually started shooting and it just starts, it, the blocking just gets more interesting and the angles get more interesting. It's like, Oh, this is way better than what I had in my head. And that's, a, that's a really happy accident almost. Yeah, although I'm sure, it ha I mean, that happens with all, everything, right? You get to sure, the location, yeah, sure. and then and then comes the last one more rewrite to the location. Mm -hmm. Actually, now that you say that, yeah, the, the layout of the apartment, particularly where he goes, is it the kitchen? 
All kinds of yeah. things. Yeah. Yeah. The cat and whatnot. Yeah. And the geography yeah. is a little different. Yeah. Everything is kind of in a circle in that, in that whole apartment. And it, it, just for how we wanted to shoot everything and, and be able to be, you know, a little wider if we wanted that layout helped us so much. It didn't put us in a box. It was, it was really a produced and, and the look of it, it was very old. It's a very old building kind of downtown Boise that, you know, it used to be a really, really old house that they turned into three apartments. So it's just, it's just got that nice old, grungy feel to it. And it certainly suits your character. Yes. <laughs> Very much so. Although, yeah, although he's, uh, we're witnessing his day of peace and tranquility. <laughs> right. that, that will always, that will always strike me. I know I, we are, uh, avoiding spoilers. I can tell. Sure. Sure. But, uh, although but, uh, I could it, have it, held on to this till you release, but it's up to you. I mean, it, no, I mean, it's, it is out on YouTube. You can anybody can watch it. It's called "See Yourself oh, Out." Okay, because I I introduce yeah. every every podcast as oh, there, you really have to watch the film first. You should treat this like a oh, film perfect. festival perfect. where you yeah. watch the film and then this is you get an hour Q and A instead of five minutes of Q and A. Oh, there you go. Yes. Well, yeah. So so yeah. Spoiler alert. Yeah. Uh, the movie uh, the movie is about uh, suicide. Yeah. And two uh, two suicidal characters that spend the day together. Both. Uh, kind of in different stages of yeah. their... Yeah, and they bond over it. And you very much believe you you tease your audience with the idea that they're going to help each other heal. Yeah. And there 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 was a draft of, of the script where that does happen. And it just never felt true. You know, I think there's, I think that I, this script particularly, I think probably has four endings that flew all over the place. Either, you know, it was really, one was really sad. One was kind of slapsticky, funny, other was, you know, and then it just kind of settled into what it is and that it always felt more true to like the actual original idea that I had of just what if two people who should not spend the day together, spend the day together. And it's, it's that thing. I'm very fascinated by people who find each other, you know, both positive and negative, you know, like, you know, Robert Plant and Jimmy Page found each other. How incredible is that? And then someone like, you know, Sid and Nancy, you know, they found each other too. So you got, (laughs) it's, it's those when, when, when two things kind of feed off each other, it, it what what can happen? What what drama? What emotions can happen? With well, that? there's an argument I would argue in a way yeah. also that that you know the the one character is having his happy day of tranquility, yeah, because um, he's made up his mind, and the character he encounters, um, it may have been very healing for him, yes, because he. Uh, he learns a lot that day. Thank, and I'm really glad you said that because that's that's why it settled on on what it did because I did want it to be somewhat hopeful for that character. I think it's very hopeful. Yeah. And, and just kind of, yeah. It is it is uh I mean it's because your film had the courage to portray suicide so humanistically and so honestly, you know, there, there was no, I, I think you are absolutely right in your instinct that if both guys had said, you know what, I've got a friend now, I'm not doing it. That would have been Hollywood. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, I mean, though, isn't it a shame that the word Hollywood's like the ultimate criticism for, yeah, right. <laughs> for artistic integrity? Right. right. But yeah, there would have been no integrity to that because, you know, we can't, we can't reach everyone. Right. But even someone who's decided today is the day, he's able to reach out and really help heal another person. That's, you know, I think that's what makes it so beautiful. Oh, thank you very much. And I think kind of that, that, yeah, that, that character, 
Um, you know, he has a lot, you know, comparatively. I mean, it, you know, there, there is that, that scene where, where he talks about you have so much more. You know, you have the sister. You have someone who cares about you. And, yeah, a friend, this random guy, probably wouldn't move that needle anymore than what it's than, than what right right whatever yeah the depression he's decided how he's gonna how he's gonna cure his depression yes and obviously yeah the the, the new friend might not be enough whereas yeah and that's and see in such your film is so economical too because in that time we're with him we learn so much about these two people, and I know I'm forgetting. You know, I can't say their names. I've no, seen no, no. I've seen too many films in the, in the sure, last sure, few years yeah. to remember. No, yeah, yeah. But but yeah, your 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 main guy, really your lead. You know, yeah, you are pointing out like we learn like he uh, we learn about his loneliness. But anyway, yeah. anyway, what I would like to <laughs> shift to is yes. is your film. You know, the filmmaking aspects are so wonderfully done that one, I think one of the tributes to you as a, as a director and a filmmaker is that we could talk about the themes and the topic of your film forever because you, you presented it so effectively. Um, you did what I think doesn't get enough praise, which is you stayed out of the way. You know, there's, I think there's a whole generation of filmmakers and some of them are wonderful, but you know, they they want to be the next Nolan, the next Fincher, the next like yes. flashy. Like, they want people to notice the directing. Yeah. And I notice your brilliant directing of telling the story so effectively that we don't even know you're there. Oh, thank you. Very you know much. what I mean? Yes. Oh, 100%. It's yeah. I, I think you know, when I was a younger uh, person, that was one I, I was all in on. Yeah, the flashy, flashy stuff, and I've I've gotten to the point of that can really get in the way. And so, yeah, we did. It was I want to just do long takes. I want I want what's interesting in the frame to be the performance or or the scene playing out rather than trying to do way too much with the camera. And, you know, we, we also didn't really have the budget or the time to do and a it lot. wouldn't have been true to this. Well, I mean, this is the script yeah. that won the award. I'm yeah. sure you have some scripts that uh, can be raising Arizona-like. Right, yeah, that sort of that kinetic Yeah, but, but this, camera work. this script, uh, yeah, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't have fit this one. Yes, and, and that was the thing. I really wanted kind of that, it's like I said, I just wanted that light touch of just having these two characters play off each other. And you don't really need to do much other than, than work with the actors to, yeah. to make that happen. Well, you did a lot. I mean, the truth is you put as much into your subtlety as, as a Fincher fan puts into his, his lack of subtlety. You know what I mean? I'm just trying to, I'm trying to stand, you know, I, I do feel like, um, I'm probably being redundant, but it's just as much work to be subtle as it is to be obvious. Sure, sure. Well, yeah. you, you know, I, I, I edited it, edited the film as well, and that was that was an interesting process because, you know, I, I, I know a lot of people who try to give you advice, especially when you're editing or when you're trying to put a final product together, um, is, you know, get in, get out, be quick, especially on a short you know, I heard a lot of, oh my gosh, if it's, if it's over 15 minutes, no, no, no festival's going to program it. So, you know, that's in your head a lot, especially when you're editing. Um, but as I was going through, it's like, no, I like the pauses. I like those moments. I like taking, the, having everything build slowly. And in the end, I, I would rather have a film that the film I wanted than something that would, you know, maybe get into, you know, two, two more festivals. Yeah. Well, and Hey, uh, as you, <laughs> I, I, I'm grateful that you did it and I'm not going to lie. Obviously, uh, 
when one is programming a film festival, you know, every time I see a beautiful it, film that's over 20 minutes, I'm like, I damn you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, you're, I, you're, I, you're soaking up more screen time, but I've, <laughs> but we've got it, you know, but. I, we got, we know, got a time I, I slot here. And I know yeah. the ratings from the jury are going to put this film in the festival, so I don't, won't even have to fight for it. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, oh boy, it would be so wonderful if we had uh, 50 wonderful five-minute films. <laughs> I know. I know. And, you know, it's the film I'm working on that I'm editing right now. I'm like, oh, man, <laughs> it's going to be 20 minutes again. But that's all right. It's all as right. As long as it's a good 20, it doesn't matter. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And particularly, particularly with See Yourself Out, um, there's not a wasted minute on it. You may have felt that your pacing was, wasn't snappy, but there's nothing, you didn't fall in love with the smell of your own. There's nothing in there (laughs) that I would have said, you know, that 17 seconds or that 45 second bit, that's actually unnecessary. Everything's necessary in it. Everything's essential. Yeah, and that was that was kind of the real challenge is, you know, you have two characters that have never met. And they need to, by the end, be quite bonded in a in a day, in twenty two minutes. And that's so yeah, you can't you can't be too precious. No. With, with and you're very you. efficient. Actually I'm thinking about it, and you know your your character introductions are super efficient. You know, even even the way, you know, at that parking lot, the way they both react to the sound of a gunshot, that tells you everything about about the place they're they're both in. You I'm know? so happy you noticed that. Thank you very much. Well, but you know, it's and that's you know, and other you know, I'm sure there could have been other drafts or, or other filmmakers would have approached it and they would have, you know, given each guy two minutes on screen to for us to really get inside his his heart, <laughs> but now you you found the perfect way just to like introduce how each of them feels about time, <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> and the whole way through, it's efficient, you know. And if you, yeah, nothing nothing needed to be rushed. And believe me, there's a lot of films that I love that I will never say out loud should have you know five minutes cut out. Yeah. But a lot of a lot of great shorts are like, but yours is not one of them, and I, I can say that with a hundred percent confidence. Well, thank you very much. <clears throat> and by the way, I also was wanted to say you kind of had a really cool situation that you knew no matter what you were premiering at Sun Valley Film Festival. It that that was a very nice thing. That was uh, it was you know, and uh, Sun Valley is about two hours from my home. And it's a nice little drive. And, and so, you know, it was nice to just be able to tell people, like, you want to go to catch them for a weekend? That's no – one, no one says no to that. It's, it's, it's a fun town. So it, it was pretty easy to get people there and, and get that support there. And it, it was – yeah, it was, it was a very, very good scenario. Yeah, and that's, that's a, uh, a well-supported, well-sponsored and funded festival too. Yes. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. It's, it's uh, if if anybody is hearing this and thinking it's just some little festival in Idaho, go to their website. It is. It is a very very fun time. I I, I highly recommend uh, anybody making the trip in March. Yeah. So how was the reception at, at the premiere? It was it was very very good. Um, uh, audible scream. Uh, at a, at a very key point. Uh, and then, uh, it, it was, it was fun. I, one of the nice things and the same goes with Sherman Oaks as well. For me to be there has been the best because I do as dark as the subject matter is, it's a comedy. I tried to make it a comedy, um, or at least put a, 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 a heavy dose of jokes in there. As There's humor as in it could. for sure. And so to hear an audience respond to it how I wanted, and Sherman Oaks was very similar, just like, oh, they got it. They get it. I'm so happy. <laughs> and it was very similar there at the, at the premiere. Just kind of people got it. I, I think when the credits started rolling, the, you could feel the air come out of the room a little bit, like they were a little bit 
drained, which I was thrilled about. I want, I, I want people to not. Absolutely. Know yeah, I know you, um, yeah, you, you give a, you give us a nice little gut punch right at the end there. <laughs> and even, um, yeah, yeah. The text to the sister. Yes. Yeah. And the you, little, uh, you, uh, little... no one's, no one's going to see that beautiful moment of you, of, of a human being being kind to people he doesn't know, like a level of kindness. Most of us never even have the, we're never even tested to be that kind. Yeah. And, uh, and he does that and walks out and then your credits roll. Yes. So, yeah. you know, you see the, 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 uh, yeah, the text. And it was funny. That was, again, that was not in the script. That was, I thought of that on the drive to the set on the third day of filming. Really? Was that the uh, day you were shooting? Oh, the third day yeah. was the last day. Yeah. So we were like, uh, cause of like, okay, we're doing that. What, what is the end? I, I, I kept going back and forth over what the ending was. And then just the, uh, the text, the ellipses was, was the first thing that popped in my head. And yeah, it ended up working out really, really well. You had a really long and successful festival run, I think. Yeah, very, very good. You know, of course, Sherman Oaks, but but it played it played. I think in nine states, all over. Um, you know, got it played twice in New Hampshire. Apparently, I have a big following in New Hampshire, uh, which, which is something you should be very proud of. <laughs> Although yeah. I'm not surprised because, um, well, but you know, I'm sure you played in L.A. more than once and some other. Uh, yes, yeah, L.A. and, and Texas, I think, uh, both had a uh, couple couple different ones. Yeah. But besides the quality, I could see um, small community festivals really rallying to it. Yeah. it's And that was, that was pretty much um, as I was traveling around. Yeah. It was, it were those smaller festivals, those very kind of grassroots types of festivals that really um, jumped on it early and, and, and seemed to have the, the best response. Well, I'm so happy that you had that experience and that you got to uh, basically uh, do a national tour. Yes, it, <laughs> of, this, really great. of the greatest nation on earth, and uh, <laughs> walking around with your uh, with your film and being well received. That's so nice. Yes, and and yes, and uh, just, I don't know if you mentioned it, but you know, won the uh, the grand jury prize at Sherman Oaks. Won a grand jury prize at Sherman Oaks. I'm sure. I'm sure other festivals are wise enough to give you awards as well. Uh, yes. Uh, well, if, I, if you want me to toot my own horn, I will. It's yeah. uh, the, uh, uh, the Magnolia Film Festival in uh, in um, Starkville, Mississippi, uh, awarded me best short as well last year. Uh, very, very nice. And my hometown festival, the Boise Film Festival also, uh, we won Best Idaho Film. Interesting. So you know, so not to, I'm surprised that you didn't win at every festival you were <laughs> <laughs> I was a finalist at a few. Uh, but yeah, did, but, but got, a, got a few. Got, a, got, got some hardware. It was very, 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 very um, humbling. Excellent. Well, and I hope, I hope, I hope that means that the next one, um, I hope it opens even more doors that, that you have these, that you are an award-winning filmmaker. That's, I, I do hope so. Yeah. And it was funny. Um, this, this next script, which is, I'll, I'll plug that. It's called high river. Um, it, it actually was a finalist again at sun Valley. Uh, did, I did not get the, the, the big prize this time, but, uh, we did film it and should be ready to start submitting for its, you know, hopefully successful festival run. Uh, early, early next year. I bet they didn't give you the award because if they gave it to you two years in a row at that point, <laughs> they're risking like they're just going to have to name it the Kevin Nielsen Award. That's that's what I keep telling myself. Well, you know, they can't. You know, they got to spread the love around a little bit. Well, honestly, I'm sure that has to be a bit of a concern. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but hopefully, and and you know, when when Sherman Oaks opens up their submissions, I'm sure I, I'm sure you will get a chance to see it. Oh, please, and and you know, we also do uh, we do a festival in June called Film of Asian LA. Oh, oh so. that's that's right. Yes, yes, yes. So I, I might get to see it even sooner. Are you Perfect. in? So you shot it. Are you still in post it, or are you? Sh- all yeah, we are uh, I'm currently editing it. Yeah. So I had technical difficulties because we shot a, quite a bit of it in 4K and my system was old. 
so I had to upgrade. But um, it's it's we're back on track with the editing. But it should be done. We should be uh, completed by uh, by January or February. Fantastic. And and did you go back to your uh, filing cabinet of script <laughs> ideas, or did you start fresh? Uh, well, a little bit. It that all came. It came from an idea because you know I knew the the uh, competition was coming up again. I figured, what the hey, submit something else. And um, as I was trying to think of an idea, uh, a kind of an interesting kind of little seed of an idea, which was, again, earmarked for something else, um, I took that and it went a completely different direction for this script. So kind of that, that general kind of idea uh, morphed into something else as I actually sat down and, and tried to make something more just come from that idea. So kind of the and, idea. And did, did the experience of, of shooting one and cutting it and taking it all the way, all the way to the public, did that inform your, your writing at all? Did it, did it change the way you approach writing or? Well, uh, for sure. Because I think one of the things, you know, see yourself out is very dialogue heavy. Um, and, and that's, that's fine. I, I really, really like dialogue. Um, and ho- ho- hopefully it's good. And, um, but for this one, I, I tried to, okay, I'm going to try to tell something a little more visually and try to try to do little things more. And then, it, and then as, as most of my stuff does about halfway through, it gets very dialogue driven again, but, but it, it was that thing of, okay, I want to try to do something a little different than last time and show show a little more range and that my friends was kevin nielsen i hope by now you've already watched see yourself out at discoveryindiefilm.com i have to say that was one of the tough ones to edit because we talked a really long time on facetime and it was all pretty interesting but i tried to just cut it down to him talking about his projects and not he and i talking about society and filmmaking at large But when you do want to hear about filmmaking at large, make sure you listen to the episode with Kevin where he does the DIF4Q, Discovering to Film 4 Questions. That'll be the episode after this one, and you'll get to find out his favorite films and more. Okay, let's wrap it up. DiscoverIndieFilm.com is your source for all the podcasts, as well as a lot of embedded short films, links to really great feature films, all those films. You can hear the interviews as well. If you're interested in social media, at DIF Wins is where Discovery Indie Film can be found. And as always, I'll mention that in June, you can go to Film Invasion Los Angeles. And in November, there's the Sherman Oaks Film Festival. I program both. And if you're a filmmaker, you should check when the deadlines are to submit. And if you're a fan of film, you should really come out. Okay, thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.